So we are here, folks, at Scaled Composites in the Mojave Desert. This is amazing. Thank you to uh, for Bob or Robert? Bob. Bob uh, Winthrop for the invitation out here and the tour around and even letting us film a little. So where are we headed to now? We're heading into our CNC area. I'm going to show you some of our mills. Speak in the language. It's what's cool here is, is I think about this. I think aerospace, you know, crazy stuff, the projects, and then there's such a culture of making and 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 doing and, and crafting. It's you know they make some of their own machines to make stuff, and it's not as uh, unaccessible as you might think. Ooh, holy cow! Oh my god! It's 50 feet by 20 feet by 8 feet uh, milling area. Uh, Was it 1,100 inches? Uh, we typically run about 1,400 inches a minute on feed. Uh, on <laughs> rapid, we limit to 2,000 inches a minute. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty quick. When you first said 50 by 20, I kind of thought, yeah, it's not that much bigger than my Haas. Well, we show you you mean feet, not mill. inches. Yeah. yeah uh, uh, we show this mill, and a lot of people say, well, I've seen a CNC machine before, but I've never walked inside of one. Walk, yes. <laughs> yes. Does it do tool changes? Yep. Does tool on changes. its own? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Oh my gosh, when your controls are in a different room. Uh, yeah, so what we're doing right now, this, this mill we cut a lot of uh, polymeric materials. Okay. Uh, not, we don't do metallics with this because we really don't have the rigidity. Sure. Uh, yeah, so uh, what we're doing right now is we're cutting some some uh, um, parts out of the material called Roa Cell. It's essentially like a foam super glue uh, oh. that, we, that we use as a core material in some of our, our parts. Okay. It goes very high temperatures, it's pretty rigid. So what we're doing right now is we're shaping, uh, we've already shaped one side of the foam and we've, uh, we've, uh, we're shaping the back side of the foam right now. So you can... Um, Looks like you've got multi-axis on this. We do. It's head. a five axis. It's a yeah. five axis machine. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we have to use that. I mean, this is really underutilizing uh, what we're doing right now. Oh, sure. We need the space because these are big parts. Yep. But, but really, uh, you know, uh, where that really shines is when we have large things like the, the tube at the end there. Yeah. Uh, where we're going to cut the whole way around it. Yep. Uh, and we'll tool. often have two or three jobs stacked up. So mm -hmm. go again. This machine is made by CMS. It's an Italian company. Okay. They, they make very large uh, gantry mills like mm -hmm. this. Uh, this 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 is the first one that came into the U.S. Uh, so so it's it's an early model uh, of this size of machine. Yep. Uh, typically, these are used for architectural work. You mm -hmm. know, cutting friezes or uh, large scale sculptures and things mm -hmm. like that. But, Heck uh, of a ball end mill there. This is a, a dispenser for what we call tooling paste, which is a, um, a material that we connect onto the, the CNC machine and we lay out the paste. So it's, it's an additive. It's an additive. Wow. We start with the urethane, we cut a, a shape oversized, then we lay in the tooling paste, let that cure, and then machine, machine a back surface away. that's absolutely ready to be used. Oh yeah, you that's have amazing. To do additional processing, you can just lay up the part on it right away. So this has a head that fits in the taper, or you yeah. can clamp it on there. Yeah, amazing. Wow, it is. It's what I think we're going to start seeing more at the accessible level for folks like me is combining additive and subtractive. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. That's what kind of got it. It has a carbon fiber uh, laminate on oh the side. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. And then it uses aluminum honeycomb core in the center. So, so we we, we can cut that. Uh, this is actually this was hacked up by hand. Mm -hmm. But but uh, this is the type of material that we were cutting over. There. Very cool. Yeah, that's a purchase product. You don't have to. No, make no, that. we make no, this we ourselves. Make this. You do. So we buy the honeycomb yeah. and then oh we do the gosh. Gosh. ourselves. Very cool. See you, Len. Yep, see you. Thanks. Nothing like speeds and feeds for uh, for <laughs> mixed materials. Right. Well, you know, it's one of the things that uh, at scale, what we have to do uh, is our su supply chain is important to doing things very quickly. Mm -hmm. So we like to have the capability of doing everything that we need to do, welding, wood shop, CNC, laying out materials. But we also have vendors who can do it for us also, yep. and so we just trade those off. I believe that I can do anything, but I can't do everything. So these are some of the machines that we use for testing. These are Instron machines, and what we do is we pull things or push them sure. until they break wow. to make sure that they meet the. Uh, it's incredible the requirements. Yep, and temperatures and. So and you're able to simulate altitude, temp or can you, I guess temperature, but not altitude. Okay. We do that in other places. Got it. Wow, very cool. And so a lot of these samples, they have to be conditioned to certain temperatures and certain levels of humidity mm -hmm. over a fairly long period of time. And then they break a bunch of them and they produce reports and we know whether or not uh, our engineering analysis is correct. Amazing. Lots of other testing takes place here of all different kinds. This team also does a lot of instrumentation for ground tests that we do on airplane parts. So we'll sometimes build full-size mock-ups of parts and then load them as they'll be loaded. Yep. And again, we, we uh, see how much stress is in the, in the structure to make sure that the engineering 
is correct. Who, who are you using other FAA or government stress guidelines, or are you cutting edge so that you have to make up your own? We pretty much have parameters. to do our own. We make yeah. up our own allowables because yep. uh, everything we do is pretty unique. Yeah, right? it's not. It's we don't we don't do production line work. There's like mills everywhere. This is yeah. amazing. It's popping up. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah, one of the key things is having the machine right there where you need it when you're working on it. Yep. I was uh, not joking when I said I was going to go on an SR-71 binge last night and hearing about how Kelly Johnson put production right next to engineering. It's what we do. Our engineers yeah. are right next to the shop floor. Uh, we try to have them working directly with, the, with the, the, the manufacturing folks, their artisans. In fact, a lot of times we tell the engineers that, uh, hey, you know, that guy on the shop, he's built 25 airplanes. <laughs> You've built one. You might go out and talk to him first before you figure out how you want to make it. As a layman, this is something I recognize from the media. Yeah. That this was a delivery vehicle, so something yeah. something went That's worth where the trash. tube goes uh, right under the under there. Okay, so this is still going to be used more, or is yeah. this was a one? So we delivered it uh, to uh, uh, to Virgin Galactic, yep. and they're operating the aircraft uh, to carry uh, Spaceship Two and Space Tree. Amazing! That's amazing! Insane! That is the X Prize. Link in the video description to more about that insane. We're now, now we're heading out to a boneyard, which is really cool. Driving out to the boneyard, and th those parts, and I don't know if you'll get a sense of the size and the scale, are turbine blades, which you can probably see in the distance. The size is almost as cool as the Strato Launch plane. I think the blades are about 160 feet long. 160 feet. I think it's a wow. So they come in on a rail car. They're longer than one though. And then they sit here. Look at the diameter. 4,300 millimeters. 20. Yeah, that's like 20 feet. Wow. Seven forty-seven. You can see the. Uh, it's kind of sad. The engines have been started to started to be removed from it. Cargo plane. No more blades. Wow. That's the the gener generator housing that you'll see. Oh at the top. yeah. It's like the size of a small house. Mm -hmm. We were able to see the strato launch which is amazing we'll put a card in the video description to the wikipedia page on it but they repurposed a bunch of 747 stuff and it's just so cool uh, and it's funny too because it's as much as it's state of the art and cutting edge and the sale is huge it's also a sense of, of doing things uh, responsibly so buying parts buying landing gear instead of uh instead of going through the cost uh making your own which i can't even begin to think what that would be when it comes to not only just fabricating the parts but the approval process the design and so forth don't break it if it or don't make it if it already exists This is awesome. So obviously a facility like this, they, uh, for a variety of, of business and, and nation reasons, they're not allowed to film. I really appreciate Bob. They are letting us film. You want to show us what we got here? Yeah, sure. The, so we two aircraft here. The gray one further out is called Ares. Okay. And this closer one in is called Sneaky Pete. So this is what you were telling me about earlier today that is a uh, rutan sort of design with the yep. front? Yep. This is an extraction of rutan design. We didn't actually build this airplane, but we fly it carrying things for customers. So it's a flying truck for us. Uh, <laughs> and we use it for for you know things that uh, are okay flying low and slow. Okay. And then Aries is sort of medium altitude. If you want to go out and look at that one. But this, this plane I'm looking at right here is yeah. flight ready, flight worthy. Yeah. It's tiny. It was one person? 
Uh, well, well, two people, one in front, one in back. Wow. Or the back seat can be used for carrying stuff. Carrying stuff, got it. Incredible. I mean, is it, you could push it by hand? Sure. Really? It's, uh, it's very light. Oh my gosh. Look at in that. In fact, uh, the, there's a big weight on the landing gear you can see here. Yeah. That if that weight wasn't there, it would probably tip over backwards. So oh, it's kind of with the plane. Interesting. It's, uh, so it's balanced, uh, you know, to carry payloads. So uh, the landing gear on this plane stays out? It stays out. Whereas it looks like Ares has retractable? Retractable gear, yep. Cool. And that's a jet? That's a jet. It's a, uh, got a uh, business, this jet engine in it. Okay. Is this is a plane that you built? This, we built this airplane Scaled. only uh, 15, 20 years ago. Wow. So, oh, this is the one it's where It's an we, Iron Eagle 3. The movie. And it, okay. And, and uh, the, it has the asymmetric uh, uh, inlet. Take a look engine. at this, folks. So, looking at it straight on from the nose. You know, cool, nothing different. You know, you got the two levels of, you know, bike the biplane kind of look with the top wing. But then look, not only is the engine on one side, it's only on one side. It's sucked back into that cavity and at an angle, but you said it doesn't imbalance the plane? That's because we have a uh, exhaust duct that straightens out the flow. So it's mounted 10 degrees off center, but it straightens out the flow as it gets to the end of the airplane. Very cool. And I, I told Bob, I was very proud of my three-year-old son because we got on a plane recently and he said, dad, suck, squeeze, bang, blow. How a jet engine works. Exactly how a jet engine works. Hey, give a second. Let's go look at this from the, the from the so you business, can kind of see it's a high tech end. airplane, but if you look at this feature right here, you can see that the um, <laughs> rudder is controlled by a cable. It yep. comes out and goes all the way up to the pedals of the airplane with a bell horn, an external bell horn. Very much like what you would find on a, uh, a kid airplane or a hand built airplane. Amazing. Huh. Removed before flight, and that's the jet engine, huh? Wow. You can actually see, uh, you won't be able to probably see it with the camera, but you can see how it straightens out the flow. Oh yeah! Wow. So this cool thing too about this plane was at one point, this actual plane had a was it, you said it was a, a Gatling gun or Vulcan mounted sort of where the 151 like there's like almost a panel cut out there. And it would go from there all the way back to here. And having the jet engine intake on the other side keeps the various the gas, gas the gun out of the engine, which uh, which can cause problems. Very cool. It, it, uh, it's a sort of medium altitude, flies in the 200 knot range, not okay. super fast, Got but it. Uh, moderately fast. Um, and it, it has a lot of maneuvering capability. Bob, thank you very much for, for not only the whole tour, but also being able to show us a few planes. I was glad to have you here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.